Hello, this is Marco from Dodo Racing. Welcome to our new series, the 2JZ Shrine. Here I will talk about everything you need to know about boosting your 2JZ. Today we will talk about injectors, fuel rails and which options you have to reuse your old injectors you maybe already have laying around. But first of all, we need to cover some basic things about injectors. When we are talking about injectors, we need to know four things. Flow, dimensions, the type of connector and the electrical properties. The first thing you are most probably looking for is the flow. But please don't make the common mistake and buy too large of injectors. They won't make your car run any better. In fact, they will make it run worse. You can just go to our website. We have a calculator. You can put in your target horsepower, your boost pressure, your fuel type, and it will give you the minimum flow you need and you can go from there and get the right size of injectors. So basically there are three dimensions we need to know. One is the upper O-ring diameter. The other is, of course, the lower O-ring diameter. And the last one is the injector length, which is measured from the inside of one O-ring to the other. So this is a standard 40 mm injector, which is 40 mm O-ring on the top and the 40 mm O-ring on the bottom. This is a 2JZ GE injector, which has a 11 mm top O-ring and a 16 mm compression cushion on the bottom. So the next thing we need to know is the connector. Basically, you have three connectors. We have the Bosch square connector. We have the US car connector and the Denso or Sumitomo connector, which looks a little bit similar, but it isn't. But we shouldn't be too concerned about the connectors as we can always adapt them. So let's say you want to use this injector. This is your stock wiring harness from your 2JZ. You will need a Denso style connector here, but here we have the Bosch connector. So you can get these adapters, which you can just plug in here and plug in here. We also have the direct connectors, which go directly onto here, so you can plug it in. Another thing you can do is pigtails, which I don't really like, because uh, I don't know that there is no, no real advantage. Because if you're already cutting your stock wiring harness like this, and you're going to connect them here, you're going to have one additional point of failure. So you could just do a direct connector, crimp it on, and you will have the best solution. So we basically just offer the crimp connectors and the direct connectors because these ones they get a little bit messy and these ones I don't like them at all so so the next thing we need to know are the electrical properties we need to know whether we have a low impedance or a high impedance injector if you have a modern standalone ECU you are most probably able to use both of them you just need to set them up correctly in your ECU. However, if you're using a stock ECU, you're going to need the same style of injectors like the stock ones. And th the other thing about the electrical properties are the dwell times. Uh, you will get the dwell times when you buy injectors and you need to set it up correctly in your ECU. What are the dwell times? In a perfect world, as soon as our injector would see current, it would open up, but in the real world, the injector just needs some time in order to open, and that's the dwell time. And our ECU needs to know that in order to get the right amount of fuel out of it. So this is a 2JZ GE VVTi setup. This is a stock intake runner. You can tell by the air assist port here. The air goes here behind the injector 
and it's mixed with the fuel and it helps with fuel atomization. But the big problem is with the fuel rail. Actually, this is a fuel rail of a GE non-VVTi. So it has the fuel return port, but the VVTIs don't have this port. So you only have a fuel feed, but no return. And the problem is if you're boosting your GE, you're gonna want a return line. So that's why you will need another fuel rail. This is where our fuel rail comes in. This is a standard 11 millimeter fuel rail, which is a direct replacement for the stock one. This is a stock fuel rail spacer. And it just replaces the stock fuel rail. So now with our fuel rail, we have four ports we can use, the front, the rear, and the two center ports. You're getting two caps. So you can, for example, cap off the center ports and use the front and the rear ones. Sometimes you don't have much space in the rear, so you would want to cap off the rear. But then, as we have a VVTi runner, the AN adapters are too tall. And if you want to connect your fuel line, you see it's not possible. It's going to hit the air assist line and, and you can't connect it. So if you want to use one of these center ports, you will need a swivel adapter, which you can also get in our shop. Now let's get to the injector. Usually you won't be able to get aftermarket injectors with this kind of uh, bottom. Usually you will get something like this. It's a 40 millimeter bottom and 11 top. You can get it in our shop. So this is a 62 millimeter injector and as you can see it fits just right. If you already happen to have a 40 millimeter injector, 40 millimeters on both sides, we have just the right thing for you as the stock fuel rail has 11 millimeter injector ports. We have made a 40 millimeter fuel rail so you're able to use your 40 millimeter injectors on your 2JZ GE. Just be patient. Usually these injectors they come with a with a bottom plastic piece which you have to remove because if you put it in like this your your seal won't be able to touch the runner because the injector is resting on the plastic piece. So you have to take this off like this. Usually you need to break it. But now as you put the injector in it's making the right seal. So let's try it out. As you can see, we have successfully installed our 40 mm injector with our 40 mm fuel rail on our 2JZ GE VVTi intake. Now, this is where, where it gets interesting. This is our 2JZ GE non-VVTi setup. You can just ignore the fact that this is a Dodo Racing runner because the injector bores are the same. The Mounting points for the fuel rail is exactly the same. So we just treat it like a stock GE non VVTi runner. This is your stock injector, which is 11 millimeters top and 16 on the bottom. And its length is 59 millimeters. So this is what it's going to look like when it's installed. Usually when you get replacement injectors, as you can see, they 
are a little bit longer because this is a 59 and this is a 62. And the problem is if you want to install them, you need to put your fuel rail a little bit higher. So what you're going to need to do if you have some 60 or 62 millimeter injectors and they are too long, you need to space out the fuel rail a little bit by adding some washers. Otherwise, you won't be able to tighten the fuel rail down and it won't sit flush. Now let's talk about our 14 mm fuel rail. It's really interesting because it's going to allow you to run almost any injector on your GE non-VVTi. Because if you have an injector at home, this is a 48 mm, 1414, or something else. For example, this is another one. If you disassemble it, it's also going to be a 1414. And with our 40 mm fuel rail and our injector buses, which you can see here, you are able to run 40 mm injectors on your GE. So, how does this work? You're going to need the 40 mm fuel rail, obviously. And now we're going to convert our GE runner to 40 millimeters by inserting the adapter buses. We have two kinds of buses, the short ones and the long ones. The long ones are meant to be used if you have really short injectors, like this one. This is a 34 millimeter. And As you can see, now you can use your 34 millimeter injector on your GE intake. Or if you have a 48 millimeter injector, you're also going to be able to use it. Then in this case, you're going to take the short buses. And you're going to need our short fuel ray spacers, which are designed especially for this. As you can see, the possibilities are huge. Note that if you want to use your center ports for fuel feed or fuel return, you're going to be able to, with the with the small spacers, but if you have the short injectors which go without the spacers, you won't be able to. You will need the swivel, the swivel ports. But what I really recommend is our new 2JZ GE non-VVTi injector. We've worked together with Teachworks. You can get them in 14 top or 11 top and 16 bottoms so it will fit in and it has just the right length so you don't have to use any few rail spacers and your rail is gonna sit as low as possible as you can see it fits perfectly but again, if you want to use one of these two ports, you're going to need the swivel adapter. Now let's get to our last topic. This is our 2JZ GET adapter. If you don't already know, it is made so you can bolt your 2JZ GTE upper plenum to your 2JZ GE. It is made just like the GE non VVTi. There is only one problem we are kind of limited with the injector selection i will show you why this is our standard ge injector 58 mil and now if you put the intake on it 
And so our main goal was that the GTE plenum stays in the right position where it needs to be in relation to the engine. This creates a major issue, which is that the throttle linkage now is hitting the fuel rail. This is why we have made a special fuel rail. We call it the low profile fuel rail, which has an indentation here to combat this issue. Let me show it. Now with our low profile fuel rail on, you can see the throttle body can be actuated normally and you can still use your 60 millimeters injectors. But if you don't already have 60 millimeter injectors, I would recommend our new short injectors. You can get them again in 14 or 11, so you can just get the standard fuel rails, either 11 millimeters or 14, and just use them without without the fuel ray spacers and you will still be able to run your GTE throttle body. As you can see, we have our 40 mm fuel rail with our new injectors installed and we have enough space for the throttle linkage. Of course, what you also can do is use standard 1414, the short ones. I'll just show it to you. As you can see, we have installed a standard 14 by 14, 34 millimeter injector. And we are also still able to use throttle linkage. Now, what I get asked a lot is, why didn't you just put a 14 mm bus here in the beginning? Because I had compatibility in mind. I knew that many people would all already have 60 mm injectors, so they are still able to use it. And you can always go down from 16 to 14. Also, the only reason we made this low profile fuel rail is because Somebody out there already has the long injectors, they're buying the kit and they still want to be able to use their injectors. For all of you that don't already have injectors, I strongly recommend our new 46mm injectors that we have made together with Dietchworks. They are really affordable and reliable and as you have seen, they are plug and play. It's a really easy solution without any few ray spacers, just put it on and call it a day. If all of this was just a little bit too confusing for you, I can totally understand. That's why you can just look it up on our website, dotoracing.com, enter the shrine. We have listed all the possible combinations with few rails, runners and injectors. You can just look it up and find the right combination for you. If you liked that video and you want to see more content like this, hit that like button, leave a comment below, tell me which topic you want to have covered in the next video. This was Marco from Dodo Racing, goodbye and see you the next time.